everybody, Dave Monahan, Goods and Tools and Supplies, and it's time once again for another Tech Lab Tuesday. Today, I'm going to talk about magnets. Yes, you might say I'm attracted to magnets or they're stuck on me. Magnets. What do we use magnets for in the machine shop? They have a variety of different uh, reasons to be in your machine shop. One that I, I, I particularly want you guys to be aware of is this magnetic strip material, this UCM348. This stuff right here, you can cut to fit in your coolant tanks on your flywheel grinders, your surface grinders, your crankshaft grinders, any, or even your honing machines, your valve refacing machines. Anytime you have a machine that has an oil or a coolant in it, if you put this magnetic strip in a, in a place before it gets to the intake of the pump, it's going to draw those metal particles out of that solution, whether it be oil or water-based synthetic coolant. And that, by drawing it to this magnet, will keep it from being ingested into that pump and then being utilized over and over again. So it'll help extend the life of your pump. It'll also help extend the life of your coolant or oil because we don't have those residual metal particulates hanging around in that coolant or oil. So keep that in mind, this UCM348, pretty good material for about any type of grinding machine that uses an oil or a coolant. Also in magnets, we have our MWR set. Now this set right here, this is one of my, this is one of my favorite things. I, I, I just love everything about it. These little guys right here, they got rare earth magnets put into them. We got a different dimension for each one of them. You can buy these individually or you can get them in the set. That all depends up to you. But uh, what I like about it is they're hollow. You can see right through them and I can get right over that stud, pull that washer right off of there. I can just go right down the boulevard, grabbing me some studs and some, or over some studs, get them washers off, back down the street. And it just makes it a little quicker because as you know, when you're in the machine shop or in the pits, uh, these parts and pieces get all oily. And when they get all oily, these little washers, whether they be a lock washer or a flat washer, like to kind of adhere themselves uh, to uh, the workpiece. And you get your screwdriver out, you grab it with your fingernails and try to remove it, where you can grab one of these magnets and it's just very quick and easy. The one I like the best out of this whole uh, set is, uh, this one's a little too small for that particular stud, but uh, the one I like the best out of that is this big rascal right here. It's got, again, earth magnets right here, but look at this, especially on these VSIs, these vial shim inserts, these things will be held in place with oil, again, that oil residue, and it kind of wants itself to adhere to it. Here, boom, right down the boulevard. I got it right here in my hand. Fast, quick, easy, even if you've got the uh, uh, lower collars for other applications you can just quickly grab all of those pieces right off so it works it works really well uh, in that regard so uh, I've got a, a, a real a fondness for those because it's saving me time in that regard plus if I've got a, a a bag of nuts and bolts and I'm trying to get them out one at a time I can use that to reach into that bag grab those components parts and pieces all the way through here. And it just makes that whole process of finding the right one and grabbing that single one that I'm looking for, or multiples of them, to get that job uh, sped up a little bit more. We also offer a deck bridge, and a deck bridge can be used for a variety of different types of applications. This one right here, you can put uh, indicators in a couple of different positions. Earth magnets, again, right here on the bottom. Quick set, set screws here. And uh, this is the Goodson uh, MBDS-2. And it allows us to do a quick measurement on, uh, on a depth. If I wanna have a, uh, a valve protrusion, I can use this as a zero setting, see how much that valve is sticking up on that particular application. If I wanna know where top dead center of the piston is, I can also set this over the combustion or the cylinder bore itself, rotate that engine, bring that piston up, make sure all my pistons are at the same height at the top of that rotation. So it's got a three eighths of holes in here and you can put the one inch travel or the two inch travel dial indicator on it, or even the 12 inch travel 
dial indicator. If you're checking squareness on a block uh, by referencing the center line of the main bore, or you've got a deck height requirement, you wanna make sure the front bank and the rear bank are exactly the same height. Those extended uh, MDI 12 dial indicators uh, work very well for that all the way through. You've seen me use this little straw magnet before again, uh, earth magnet, rare earth magnets there as well. And we use that mostly for the keepers in our multi-valve overhead cam cylinder heads or even these big uh, top fuel dragsters uh, kind of kind of fall into the same thing. They, they have keepers and they have little bitty uh, nuts, bolts, and washers. But as you can see, we can reach right in and grab. It's got it on both ends. So you can have one on that end, put it on that end. And I've got two, two, two keepers in one. And that's our VKM17. Nice, clever little straw magnet to make it easier in the machine shop. There's other reasons you'll find a, a need for a magnetic base. And we offer not one, but two different styles of magnetic base. The first one here is just a simple magnetic base. It's got an on and off switch, as you can see right here. And you can put it on a, on a surface and then measure that and then move that surface underneath the, the uh, indicator and see if you have an uphill or a downhill uh, situation you might have to deal with. It's also good for you to put these on your surface grinding tables and make sure that that surface grinding table is moving across parallel and not having a, a rising or a lowering uh, situation on there on, on your V and flat way. The MBR1F is the is the brother of the MBR1 and what it gives us is a fine adjustment. You can see I can fine tune that very easily with this neural knob off here to the left. Makes no difference which one you want. I like this one because I do like that fine tuning uh, capability right there on that MBR1F. Also, when you're grinding flywheels, not so much on a flat flywheel, but we've, you've heard me say before again, you're not measuring, you're just guessing. And when you're grinding a cupped flywheel, it's critical that you maintain, let me get some of this out of the way, you maintain a dimension, I <laughs> just destroyed my whole setup here, that you maintain the dimension equal what the, the actual flywheel itself wears here. The clutch mounts up here. So if I take 50 thousandths off of here, I have to take 50 thousandths off of here. So what we want to do is measure that geometry to get us to that context so we know exactly how much material we're removing. Now, in, in, the, in the case, as you can see right here, my indicator is not touching that base where I need it to be. And that's okay because I could put a two inch uh, travel indicator on there and I'd have that uh, uh, ability to touch that surface or we also offer these little extensions for the dial indicators, inch and a half, two, and three inch, and we can just add those to the bottom of this tool, screw this stylus off, and screw this stylus back on. Just like that there. And now I can accurately make contact I can set a zero, I know where I'm at. I can machine this now, get it cleaned up the way it's supposed to be, take another reading, say I've taken 30, 40, or 50 thousandths, whatever it might be, and then I'll have to go ahead and grind the top of this as well. So I like this. This also has magnets on the bottom so I can set it up for different diameter flywheels, but that's what this is, a quick reference so you know exactly how much material to the thousandths of an inch that you're taking off of the wear surface on these cupped type flywheel. We've also got residual magnetism that shows up inside of our components through the machining process. Most of the time it's going to happen in a connecting rod. It can also happen to the crankshaft itself. We don't want that residual magnetism uh, held into those uh, steel components because what's it going to do? It's going to attract metal particles. And uh, as any engine uh, is fired up and running out there, it's kind of self-destructing itself, uh, uh, trying not to because that's what oil does. Well, uh, takes heat away and two, adds a lubrication. And the clearances you guys set on it prevent that metal-to-metal -metal contact. But sometimes it does happen in the thrust areas. And as that metal is shed from that engine, 
we don't want our components to become magnets and start holding on to that. We want that to get into the filter and be filtered out of that. So we have this uh, magnetic uh, indicator that tells us if a component has that residual magnetism in it, yes or no. So you want to be aware of that. Now you might say, well, Dave, that's really good. Now I know I have uh, residual magnetism in this connecting rod as an example. What am I going to do about that? Well, we have a DMAG table right here. You can get a DMAG table. It's a process of placing the work piece on top of this table, turning it on, and in a short period of time, it draws the magnetism out of it. You can also just pass the part uh, over the top of that to get to the same result. So there's a lot of need in the machine shops uh, for uh, magnets. And uh, even if it's not the actual machine shop, if you go to a repair facility, say you're getting a brake job. And again, you know, rotors and drums are made out of cast iron and, and steel uh, materials. Well, there's a silencer band, a little bitty strip of magnet that we can use to control chatter on those uh, brake uh, lays uh, when that chatter does occur. And then you guys deal with chatter on valve seats uh, all the time, whether you're cutting them or grinding them. But if you're machining a drum or a rotor, you've also got chatter to deal with in that regard. You know, there's one thing I've been wanting to do for, for a long time, and uh, uh, not to get corny or anything, but well, let me show you the finger right here. And uh, this is our little RW Mag. We came up with this uh, quite some time ago. It's got Goodson written right there on it. It's got a little magnet right here at the end. So if I'm assembling one of these multi-valve overhead cam cylinder heads and I got all these keepers down in here, I can just reach down and grab those as I need them, find the one I'm looking for, put the rest of them back, reach back in again as required, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. So that's our little RW mag and um, it's really a cool thing. It doesn't do much uh, uh, understanding at all looking at it in the catalog on flat paper, and that's why I wanted to bring that out in this equation uh, of magnets, because magnets play a role in the machine shop. Uh, we need to have them to, you know, just save the time all the way around. So uh, if you have any questions, you can catch us on the web at Goodson.com or call us 1-800-533-8010. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.